Sunny morning, DJI Mini 2 just turned up. Very happy. Let's get on with it. Never up, never down, never. Like a theme in a song, clever. Feeling high, feeling so, here's the bag. The Air 2 bag. So to say, absolutely identical. I wasn't a fan of the uh, bigger bag for the Air 2 initially, but after using it hiking for a few months, I have to absolutely love it now. So all neatly packed inside. New large remote. The little Mavic Mini 2 itself. Battery hub, I'm guessing. And some other bits and pieces. So, first off, as we, as we knew already, pretty much identical to the existing uh, Mavic Mini. <clears throat> the combo, you get this very natty little... Uh, rotor propeller uh, cover and you can see one of the issues i had with the uh, original mavic mini flight props were flying around all over the place so this is a, a very good little uh, bonus so a lot been said about the uh, the new remote uh, not gone unnoticed that the remote is now larger than the uh, drone itself but like i said again it's exactly the same dimensions as the Air 2 remote control. Initially, I was a little bit unsure about it, but it has a very, very premium feel, a very solid, good feel, feel about it. And for me, the most important element is that it's housing a much bigger battery and it's capable of OcuSync transmission. So for those two reasons, it's absolutely worth lugging around a much bigger remote control because um, this remote's battery is 5,200 milliamp hours. It's gonna be enough for about four or five full flights of your drone which is what it's all about <clears throat> put out the little sticks just screw them in and that's where your phone goes <clears throat> just slot your phone in and there you have your uh, your full setup so here we go got them side by side um original mini and the mini 2 so my first when i first did my um, hands-on review of the original mini one of the points i made was um, how obviously the engineering brief was be to, to keep it down to 249 grams and what you got was quite a very lightweight light feeling uh, drone which was fundamentally flimsy in places so I remember flexing the the legs and you can see how easily the legs will twist and how flimsy and light the propellers are and this was one of the contributing factors I think into why it wasn't so good with the wind new mini um, is feeling a lot better so first of all the legs look at that i cannot can barely flex them so it's a much much uh, stronger more rigid leg and also the props rotors they bend but nowhere near i mean these are very very flimsy and light and you can easily uh, bend them these are much more rigid i can feel they've got very uh, they've got a lot less flex as you go along as you try and bend them from the tip so you, you straight away I can see that you've got much stronger legs and you've got stronger rotors. So I have got high hopes for the Mini 2's ability to handle wind. We like said um, the, in, in my last video that the pitch has also been increased. So um, the original Mini used to be uh, pitched out, if you like, at 30 degrees. That was how steep it could fly into a wind. New Mini 2 can go to 40 degrees, which is going to allow a, um, a, a much steeper pitch and you should be able to get into the uh, strong wind far better the other uh, big aspect of course is the increase in the overall top speed uh, 29 miles an hour i think was the top speed in s mode and sports mode uh, it's gone up to 36 miles per hour okay so that's another significant increase so all in all i've got high hopes for it it's a lovely beautiful still sunny day this morning so i'm going to get out there flying later on next big storm that hits the uk though i'll be putting this set through its paces in the wind my first impressions are very much this is a far more uh, significant and well-engineered product than the original Mini. Uh, firmer legs, firmer props, steeper pitch, uh, higher wind, sp uh, higher top speed. Uh, camera, pretty much the same as I said. Uh, you used to get 12 megapixel photos. It was capable, the sensor was capable of uh, shooting 4K, but obviously the uh, processors inside there couldn't handle it for whatever reason. They've obviously upped the processing power because you've got the 4K, you've still got the 12 megapixel uh, photo ability in here. You've got a higher video bit rate, as I said, uh, 100 megabits per second. That's the amount of information, um, if you like, uh, of, the of the video itself. This was limited, the original Mini was uh, limited to just 40 megabits per second. 
So two and a half times uh, increase in the video bit rate. So all in all, I've got very high hopes for this. And obviously the big, big thing, of course, is OxySync transmission. We should suffer no signal dropouts whatsoever. OxySync is DJI's top transmission signal system. And um, uh, literally in everyday flying, I and mean, as I said, gives you uh, insane ranges. I mean, you, you really do not need to be flying. You should not be flying up to uh, six to 10 kilometers or uh, you know, four to five miles. That's well beyond what you can see and not a great move. What it means in everyday flying, when you're flying near woods and trees, which normally suck uh, the signal out of everything, or in uh, residential areas where you've got a lot of Wi-Fi interference, all of that should be a thing of the past now, thanks to the OcuSync transmission. You should not suffer any signal dropouts at all. So my first impressions are very, very good, very, very pleased. It's clearly a better engineered product, much firmer and stronger. Uh, in here is just gonna be the uh, battery charger unit. Let's just get that done. So now the overall charging cable is USB-C, but what crucially that means is that when you're out for the day, you're gonna be able to charge up the batteries uh, by just sticking that into your car cigarette lighter, your 12 volt outlet, um, or even a chunky uh, power bank is gonna be uh, capable of recharging. It'd have to be a pretty big power bank. But the point being with the, uh, all the other drone models that we've got, the Air 2 and the Pro and the like, they come with their own dedicated large power pack uh, to charge things up, not so here. You have your little charger, uh, and a simple USB-C straight into the um, uh, battery bank that you get with the combo. If uh, you're not getting the combo, if you're only getting the standard, then you'll be plugging straight into the drone itself. Either way, no matter what, you're gonna be able to charge this up on the go in the car on a, uh, when you're out and about, which is a huge improvement, I think. So that's it unboxed. Uh, now I've got to charge up the batteries, then we'll uh, switch it on, get it activated, uh, probably do a firmware upgrade and then get out and get flying. Lovely day, let's get on to it. Okay, fully charged, activated, SD card in, beautiful sunny day, not a lot of wind, ready to fly. Just before you do that though, very quick, uh, go to those three dots in the top right, uh, check you're happy with the max altitude, 120 meters, 400 feet, that's the legal maximum. Max distance, 2,000 meters. Uh, that's way more beyond uh, the uh, legal uh, distance that you can fly, certainly in the UK anyway, but um, bring it down to whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, auto return to home altitude is the one thing I would tell you to adjust. It defaults to 100 meters, that's 300 feet. Uh, way, way too high in my opinion, unless you are living near very, very tall trees or skyscrapers. Return to home altitude is uh, when you lose the signal, that's where the uh, drone is gonna rise up to before it then comes back to its takeoff point. For me, um, I think 30 meters or 100 feet is about right. Okay, I certainly haven't got any trees that are higher than 30 meters in my area. And all it's gonna do is waste battery going up to that height. So knock that down. Then finally, we're, uh, we're good to take off. So uh, make sure you're not near any metal. So uh, roof of a car generally isn't any good, otherwise you have to, redo the uh, the battery. Make sure you haven't got a little dog that's gonna go crazy when you uh, take off. And uh, let's go, fire it up. No, stay there, mate. Okay. Well, my first impressions are um, it's a little bit quieter. Uh, it's holding its position very steadily. Whilst that's there, I might quickly uh, fire up the Mini, the original Mini. So a definite difference there. If I bring this back a little bit, you can hear that's the sound of the original Mini. And the sound of the new Mini.
traditional So there's no doubt that uh, the Mini 2 is a little bit quieter, not quite the little uh, Angry Bees. I mean, the original Mini wasn't too bad, but uh, new Mini seems to be even quieter, which is a nice result. Let's start recording. And off we go. Never up, never down, never Like a theme in a song, clever Feeling high, feeling Checking low, into sports mode straight away so right, Make use of this new top speed, 36 miles an hour And of course, one of the improvements you've got with the new style remote, you can hit that uh, top right button, so just here, and that will swap between video mode and uh, picture mode, which is always nice. Right, so one thing I've noticed, picture is obviously quite jerky here. So what you can do is go into control, scroll down to advanced gimbal, and you can slow down that pitch speed and you can increase the pitch smoothness. So that will, uh, then make your camera movements a lot more gentle. And also you can, your rotation, if you have that quite high, it means that when you turn, very, very jerky and sharp, drop that right down to around eight, and then you see much smoother. This is in normal mode. That might be a bit too slow, so just maybe knock it up to say around there. Okay, right. <clears throat> let's get uh, let's get this boy home. Okay, good. Glad to get it back. Uh, never good to push the battery. <clears throat> so there we go, look. Uh, when you compare them side by side, they look the same. Clearly they're not the same though. Uh, might be the same body. Like I said earlier, much sturdier legs, sturdier propellers, lower pitch speed, uh, sorry, lower pitch of the, of the sound of the propellers. So it seems quieter. You've got the higher maximum speed and uh, certainly I wasn't struggling. I mean, there's only a light breeze today. Uh, a wind test will be saved for another day. It's nice to be able to shoot in 4K. Uh, for many people though, 2.7 is more than enough for their everyday needs, and it's a lot easier to edit uh, uh, when you're uh, working with a, a smaller uh, resolution. So 4K, a little bit subjective. If, you, if that floats your boat, then so be it. Raw picture files though, of course, again, if you're happy fiddling about in post uh, with uh, photo editing software, then the raw file production is gonna be fantastic for you, and that'll be a real plus as well. I already did another video on the pros and cons of uh, upgrading, and look, I'm gonna be putting this through its paces for the rest of this afternoon and this weekend, and I'll do another video on that. But for today, my first flight, I have to say I am very, very impressed with this. Uh, it is a sturdier little beast and um, I think it's gonna be a, a really, really good travel drone for me. So look, anyway, as ever, you know the drill, give a little thumbs up for me, really helps the cause, and if you haven't already, sub and ding that dong, so you get notified whenever I put something out. Either way, I hope you're enjoying the weather wherever you are, stay safe and sane, have fun, and happy flying.